Hello, algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here, and those of you that were in school the Friday before spring break, you realize that, you know, we weren't just doing some babysitting stuff. Those of you that decided just to kind of take the day off, you're going to be a little bit behind, but here's your chance to catch up. This video is going to have three demonstration problems, and then it's going to have, uh, I believe, four problems at the end of it. The four problems are due the Tuesday we come back. It is totally cool to watch this video more than once to try to figure out how to do those four problems at the end. I am going to provide you the answers. However, some of you seem to think you could just write down my answers and get credit for it. Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Um, I will need to see work, and the work needs to be legit and look like what you either did Friday in class or saw in the video. Should you choose to not do that, you will not be able to hand this assignment in later, and you will not get credit. It is not okay to just take time off because you don't want to do something. So, we are getting very close to being full-time high school students, and the closer we get, the more I will treat you like that. Well, <clears throat> Friday we saw this equation here on the left, and we went through what it means. Let's do it for our friends that uh, don't know. Cat, uh, the H without anything on it is our ending height, right? Ending height. <clears throat> the T is time, and it depends on which formula you're using, which equation. Those of you who were there Friday, you're looking at that one on the right going, well, I don't remember seeing that one. And you're right, I didn't show you that one. This one is when we're dealing with feet and seconds. Okay, and this one is when we're in metric units, meters and seconds. Okay, and you'll know based on the heights I give you will either be in feet or in meters, and the velocity will either be feet per second or meters per second. And so you'll be able to know which one to use. Uh, they're exactly the same except for the coefficient on t squared. A is different. It's a four point negative 4.9, 4 9 tenths, but on the feet of uh, the English standard units, it's <coughs> excuse me, negative 16. So the variables don't change. All right, v sub o is your initial velocity, your original velocity, or your starting velocity. Now some of you will go, well, hey, what's velocity? Velocity is speed plus direction. And that's why there's a plus and a minus, okay? If the thing is initially going upward, we'll use the positive. If the thing is initially going downward, we'll use the negative, okay? And then h sub o is your starting height or your initial height or your beginning height. Okay, starting height. Now it's not always going to be off the ground. We're going to be using these equations to find out how things will fall in the, on the earth. Now I must preface this, we are neglecting air resistance. We're pretending that there is no air and so um, things will happen differently if we account for the air, but we're not going to be ready for that. We're not going to do that in this class probably do that in a physics class in high school or perhaps in college. <clears throat> All right, so let's get down to this. I've got three sample problems that I'm going to go through with you, and then I'll turn you loose on the four problems. Now, there's the first sample problem. There's the second one. There's the third one. There are the four sample problems, and the last page are the answers. Okay, and so I will show them to you for a long enough time. You can pause your video and get what you need. But again, if you just write down all these answers without any valid work, well, you're not going to get credit for this assignment. Okay, so here's the first sample problem. A ball is kicked off the ground with an initial velocity of 50 feet per second. When does it come back to the ground? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture. All right, maybe I should do this. I'll put an extra page in there. Okay, first thing we're going to do is draw a picture. So I need the ground. So there's my ground and now I need the ball and so here's the ball and if you want you can put the stick figure in you know you don't have to but it's okay to alright and this stick figure is kicking the ball and the ball is going to travel in a parabola it's going to do something like that okay well it says when will the ball hit the ground well I'm looking for this point here what is that don't tell me it's when the ball hits the ground. I know that already. What is that? Think about what we've been doing lately. 
Hey, that looks like an x-intercept, doesn't it? Yeah, and actually, it's actually going to be a t-intercept because we're going to be graphing in terms, well, we're not graphing, but the pictures are going to be in terms of the time as the independent variable and the height of the ball as the dependent variable, much like when we did uh, distance over time and we ended up with a rate. Remember doing those way back a long time ago? It's very much the same thing. In fact, it actually is the same thing. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So we're going to be looking for a t-intercept. Well, how do we find an intercept? We use the quadratic of formula. Formula, of course. And so you'd say x equals, but since we're talking about t as our independent variable, it would be t equals the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right? And so to set this up, we need an equation, right? Well, it was kicked with an initial velocity of 50 feet per second. So we're going to take this equation. And we're going to fill in everything we possibly can and see if we can't come up with a quadratic equation uh, and uh, do our ABC thing. Okay, so the ending height is when it's back on the ground. So that's going to be zero. And that's a good thing because I want my quadratics to equal zero when I go to solve them. Now the negative 16 is a constant, so that's in the problem. T is what we're solving for the time. How long will it take? All right, so that's got to be there. Now the initial velocity is 50 feet per second, T. But is it upward or downward? Well, they're kicking the ball up, so it's a positive 50. And the starting height is the ground, so that's also zero. So I'll put a plus zero in there. So if I go identify A, B, C, easy as negative 16, 50, zero. And then I go to my quadratic formula, t equals the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now some of you say, well, Mr. Warren, shouldn't we find the discriminant? You go right ahead. You can calculate the discriminant. There's nothing wrong with that. If I do the discriminant, I'm going to get 50 squared minus zero, because four times 16 times zero is going to be zero. And so 50 squared is going to be 2,500 or 2,500. So if you like, you can go, well, t is going to equal negative 50 plus or minus the square root of 2,500 all over negative 32. And I'm going to simplify that to negative 50. That's supposed to be an equal sign there, plus or minus 50, right, all over negative 32. Now, if you're paying attention to the problem, this is going to be really cool. Because I'm going to do negative 50 plus 50 and get 0, right, negative 50 plus 50 over negative 32. And then I'll do negative 50 minus 50 over negative 32. And so I'll get 0 over 32, which equals 0. And I'll get uh, negative 100 over negative 32, which I'll have to uh, divide or simplify. I'll go ahead and simplify it. It's, it's going to be a positive 25 eighths, I believe, which will get me uh, 3 and 1 eighth, all right? Or as a decimal, 3 and 125 one thousandths, okay? Now, this is the cool part t equals zero. Why did I get that? Well, when the problem started, just as you're getting ready to kick the ball, what's the time? Zero. And see the ball is sitting on the ground. It's also sitting on the ground here over at, what was it, three and a, three and one eighth seconds. So in other words, what we just found out is that it'll take the ball three and one eighth seconds to get back to the ground. Okay, so in three, oops, we're not in writing mode. Three and one eighth seconds. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. All right, how high does the ball go? Well, let's go back to my picture here. Oh, let's switch to point bolt. We want to know how high the ball goes. Well, what's that? Well, Jiminy Christmas, that's the vertex. You know how to do the vertex. 
So let's go find the vertex. So it's going to be t equals the negative of b over 2a. This will tell me the t coordinate of the vertex. So I think this would be negative 50 over negative 32. And if I simplify that, I'm going to get, what, 25 uh, sixteenths. And I'm going to go mix number on that. Maybe I'll even, yeah, okay, I can go mix number 1 and 9 sixteenths seconds. That's now how high it goes, right? That's a matter of time. Okay, to figure out the time, or to figure out how high it goes, I'm going to go h equals negative 16 times 25 sixteenths squared plus 50 times 25 sixteenths. All I'm doing is plugging it in. Yeah, plugging it in. Now, by the way, some of you have been trying to use the excuse, I don't have a graphing calculator at home. I've shown you that site, uh, desmos.com. Okay, you can use that. You can go uh, to Google. Google acts as a calculator. I've been showing you all these things, so there really is no excuse for not being able to do these. Okay? Uh, if your internet's down, then go spend some time at the library. Not very long, just long enough to get your assignment done. All right, so I am typing into my calculator here what I just wrote down, and this is going to tell me how high the ball goes. All right, 25 divided by 16. Oops, I think I have a mistake. There we go. Yeah. Okay, looks like it's going to go just a little bit over 39 feet. I ended up with 39.0625. I want to say that's 1 16th, but I'm not sure. Hold on a second. Uh, math frac. Yeah, so it's going to go 39 and 1 16th feet high. 1 12th of a foot would be an inch, so it's actually a little bit less than an inch. All right, now if you're paying attention to what you were doing here, you actually just did part C as well. Uh, how high does it go? Well, it's going to go 39 and 1 16th feet high. Okay. When does the ball get to its maximum height? Well, you actually did this part first because you had to figure out t to be able to figure out h, right? So it will reach this height in 1 and 9 sixteenths seconds. Now, 8 sixteenths would be half a second, so 9 sixteenths would be a little bit more than half a second. So it's going to get to its maximum height in just a little bit over one and a half seconds. Okay, now when will the ball be 25 feet off the ground? So, you know, that's going to actually happen twice. It's going to happen here, and you can't really see that. Let me do it in black, maybe. And then again, it's going to happen over here, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use the same equation except the Ending height is 25 feet off the ground. It's almost like we're freeze framing it, stopping there. So we're going to have 25 instead of h or 0. We're going to have 25 equals negative 16t squared plus 50t. Now the starting height is still the ground. And to solve this, we need our quadratic to equal 0. So we're going to subtract 25 from both sides. And that will yield the equation. 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 50t minus 25. That is supposed to be a subtraction sign there. Looks rather strange. I will fix it. All right, so, you know, we had this little picture, something like this, right? And we're trying to find out when it's here and here. Well, since we in effect, adjusted the starting height when we subtract the 25, right? It's like we changed the starting height. It's like we actually moved the t-axis. So now we can go ahead and use the quadratic formula again. Yeah, when it's asking you uh, at what time will it be at a certain height, it can be a quadratic formula situation. So I'm still going to do A, B, C. Easy as negative 16, 50 negative 25. All right. And so uh, you want to do your discriminant, go right ahead. We know there's going to be two answers. 
we're going to get a positive discriminant, but we can go ahead and figure that out. So we're going to go 50 squared minus 4 times negative 16 minus negative 25. And let me see here. So that'll be 2500, zero, zero, and that's going to be a negative. That's going to be 100. 1600, zero, zero, I believe. Yeah, because 4 times 25 is 100, and 16 times 100 would be 1600. It's a negative because there's 1, 2, 3 negatives being multiplied. So that's going to equal 900, which is cool because it's a perfect square. These will come out to be pretty answers. All right, you know, I'm just feeling insecure for a moment. I'm just going to double check myself just to make sure because if I have a mistake here, and I gotta go looking for it, it'll waste your time. Yep, it is 900. All right, so I know there's gonna be two solutions. I knew that anyway from my picture, but now I can actually go find them. So T is gonna equal negative B plus or minus square root of the discriminant all over 2A. So we're gonna have negative 50 plus 30. The square root of 900 will be 30. Divide by negative 32 and we're going to get negative 50 minus 30 divided by negative 32. And so that'll be 20, 30 seconds, right? Negative 20 over negative 32, which will be 5 eighths of a second. Yeah, so in 5 eighths of a second, it'll hit right there. It'll keep climbing up till it gets to the max and then it'll start to fall down and the other one will get me negative 80 over negative 32. All right, and uh, dividing by eight will get me, well, actually divided by 16, I think. 16, that'll get me five halves, which will be at two and a half seconds. And so this one here will occur at two and a half seconds. So this quadratic formula stuff is pretty powerful if you think about it. All right, let's try another problem. Very similar. This time a rocket is launched upward off of a 20 foot high platform with an initial velocity of 140 feet per second. Well, I'm just gonna write my equation. I'm gonna have h equal to negative 16 t squared. The initial velocity is 140, it's upward t is the variable, and uh, its starting height is 20 feet. It's 20 feet off the ground. When will the rocket reach the ground? Okay, well, this is a quadratic formula question. Okay, but again, at first I'd like to draw a picture. So let me get a picture here. Hold on a second. My telephone is ringing. Well, I guess that's okay. I don't need to answer it. I can always check it after the video. So if you hear that noise in the background, okay. So now we got a little platform here, and you know I'm never going to grade you on your artwork, so please don't worry about trying to do this well. All right, and so my rocket is going to do this. All right, there's my handy dandy rocket. Okay, and it's going to go something like that. It's supposed to make a nice, pretty parabola, and it would if I could draw with the airliner, but I'm not very good at that, as you can tell. Okay, but we're not gonna grade on artistic ability. So we're trying to find out this one here, right? When will it come back to the ground? Now, there's no parachute on the rocket. Don't add anything. Okay, so our equation was h equals negative 16 t squared uh, plus 140t um, plus 20 because of the starting height. We got A, B, C, easy as negative 16, 140, 20. And we're just gonna use, let's go ahead and find our discriminant. So we're gonna do 140 squared minus four times negative 16 times 20. And 14, 14, 196. And I think there's gonna be a pair of zeros on the end. We're gonna be adding, and let's see, if I double this, well, I know it's going to be a positive. So if I double this, I get 32. And I double it again, I get 64. 128 is 10. So 1, 2, 8, 0. Oh. And so that's going to end up being uh, 
I believe that's right. Okay, so now watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to go use the quadratic formula using that discriminant, and I'm going to get a positive time and a negative time. Yeah, and it, it actually makes perfect sense if you look at the picture. You're like, a negative time? How can that be? Well, it can't. But you see, my parabola is perfectly symmetrical from this height of 20 feet there. But this part here doesn't have anything to be symmetrical with. So you see, if it were to be on the ground here, it would be like going back in time because it's starting at this point, right? This is where t equals 0. So hold on a second here. Hey, I'm in the middle of making a video. Can I call you back? Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, sorry about that. My wife's trying to get a hold of me, and I'm in the middle of making a video, but that's okay. So we're going to get a positive time and a negative time. So let's see here. We're going to have negative 140 plus, and I don't think that's a perfect square, so I'm not going to punch it in my calculator and then write down a decimal. Some people do that, but they uh, decrease the accuracy of their answers, and they don't really understand what they're doing. So I'm going to leave it like this. 20,880 divided by negative 32. And then we also have negative 140 minus the square root of 20,880 divided by negative 32. And I'm going to rewrite this one here. It just doesn't look good. I hate for you to be reading and go, what did he just do? And I think the problem is it switched out of the calligraphy pen on me. And so my handwriting looked worse. So what do we got here? 20,880. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator to figure out both of those, and I'll tell you what, I'll do that, uh, I'll do that using, um, okay, the graph for here. It'll just take a second to load up, and you'll see I'll get the same two answers. So, all right, let's see here. Well, first I'm going to put my numerator, and my numerator should be what? Negative 1. 40 plus the square root of 20,880. And if you're on one of my calculators, you have to close the parentheses. I have to arrow out. I think Dan Michael and uh, Michael Gregg would do it more like this one. Um, then I'm going to divide by negative 32, and I'm going to get a negative time. There it is. Now I'm not going to report that as an answer because we can't go backwards in time. Now I'm going to go get the positive time here just simply by changing the positive to a minus, the plus to a minus, and there we go. So it's about 8 and 89 hundredths of a second. Okay, so almost 9 seconds. But you see, it's pretty simple to do here. And you notice, oops, I'm not on. Turn on, please. Where are you? OK, we're connected. Why are we not moving? Oh, dear. I know, sometimes when I turn that airliner off, it doesn't work. OK, there we go. So let's see here. So to answer to question A is simply, uh, it will return to the ground in 8 and 89 hundredths seconds. All right, how high will the rocket go? Well, that's just like the last problem. I'm looking for this point right here. In other words, I'm looking for the vertex. So I'm going to go t is equal to negative of b over 2a. Oh, I cannot write all of a sudden. Oh, and it switched out of the calligraphy pen on me again. Don't know why it's doing it. It might be possessed. I'm not sure. Could be. All right, so negative 140 over negative 32. And I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. I'll probably get a decimal for that. That's okay. And so it looks like 375. I think that might be 3 eighths. It looks like 3 eighths of a second. 3 eighths to me. Yeah, it is 3 eighths. Or 4 and 3 eighths. 
and that would be seconds. And how do you know it's seconds? Well, first of all, it's solving for t, which is time. And time is measured in seconds in these kinds of problems. Okay, to figure out the uh, how high it actually goes, that, that's how long it takes to get there. That's not how high it goes. To figure that out, I'm going to take this 4.375 and plug it into this equation. So I'm going to go negative 16. Uh, was it 4.375? It was. So let's go 4.375. And then we'll square it, uh, plus 140 times 4.375. And then we have to add 20 to it because of the starting height being 20 feet off the ground. And there is our maximum height, 326 and a quarter feet, or 326 feet and uh, 3 inches. Okay, 326 and a quarter. All right, and we actually did two parts there. We did B and C kind of simultaneously. We actually did C first, if you want to be specific about it. So this was going to be uh, four and three eighths. Oops, that's not right. Uh, it goes 326 and a quarter feet, 326 and a quarter feet, and then it reaches that height in four and three-eighths seconds. I think I lost a C in there. Sorry about that. All right. When will the rocket be 199 feet off the ground? Well, that problem is done the same way as the first one, except we have to put 199 in for H and then get the equation equals zero and go to the quadratic formula. So to model that, we'll take 199 with negative 16 t squared plus 140t plus 20, getting it equal to zero. To solve quadratics, we always want them equal to zero. Well, there's a small exception to that, but most of the time, I should say. And this will be minus 179. And now you can go ahead and uh, use the quadratic formula. You'll get two positive answers on your time. So let's see, t equals the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, and I'm not going to show you on the calculator on this one. I'm going to trust that you know how to do that. I'm going to, just in the interest of time, go ahead and do it on my own. Minus 4, negative 16, uh, negative 179. All right, that's close, close that, close that, divide by negative 32. And I get about 1 and 55 hundredths of a second will be one of the answers. So t would approximately be 1 in 5,500 seconds. And then I can just edit that by changing that plus the square root to minus the square root. And I get the other one to be approximately 7 and 20 hundredths seconds. That is a rounded answer. All right, one more, and then I'm going to turn you loose. Okay, so the next problem is a rock is dropped off a 300 meter high bridge. When will it hit the ground? Well, again, I love to draw a picture first. And so, you know, we got this bridge over here. Doo -doo -doo. Oh my goodness, what a terrible looking bridge. But it doesn't matter. Okay, and so we have this rock. And the rock is falling down here. Let's assume that there's water down here. It doesn't matter. Okay, whether it's water or the ground, as long as the height is the same. And we know that this distance is 300 meters. Okay, now since I switched to meters on you, you're going to want to use h equals negative uh, 4 and 9 tenths t squared plus or minus v sub o t uh, plus h sub o. All right, now let's write our equation. So 
ending height is going to be zero, right? Because that's when it hits the ground. Okay, negative four and nine tenths. Now, what's the starting height? Well, if it's being dropped, this, excuse me, starting velocity, if it's being dropped, the starting velocity is zero. So this whole thing turns to zero. And then we're gonna have plus 300 because the starting height is that. So B is zero in this problem. So A, B, C. Easy as negative four nine tenths, zero, 300. All right, so T is going to equal, oops, I should have done equals, uh, zero plus or minus. And I'll tell you what, I'll figure out the discriminant up here. We're gonna have zero squared minus four A, and then C, uh, I've got a mistake in there. Yeah, the 4.9 is negative, there it is, okay. I knew it because I was gonna get a negative discriminant, which means it would never hit the ground. There would be no x-intercepts or t-intercepts, right? So four times four and eight tenths times 300 is going to be 5,880. And that'll be all over negative 32. All right, well, I'm gonna get two answers here, but one's gonna be negative. It's not gonna make any sense. Can you tell which one's gonna be negative? I'm only gonna figure out this one. Because when I divide a negative by a negative, I get a positive. If I figure out the positive one in this problem, I'll get a negative time, which doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna do the square root of 5,880 and I'm going to divide it by negative 32, oh, divide by, yeah, negative 32, I said that right, sorry. And I'm going to get that the time is approximately equal to two and four tenths seconds. All right, that's pretty simple. So you feel free to watch this video more than once or watch parts of it more than once. Here are your four problems. Go ahead and pause so you can copy down the important information. Okay, they are valid problems. We've already done them in the honors class. Please watch the video more than once. Send me an email saying, hey, I don't know how to do number two. By the way, if you send me a whole bunch of emails Monday, the day before we come back, I'm probably not going to reply to them. I expect them, uh, you know, before then. Okay, and then here are the answers. Okay, so each one has multiple parts. I know the homework said that there were eight problems but these four problems all have multiple parts, and so I count that as actually being a little bit more than eight. All right, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your break. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.